What's up everybody, Michael Silva here to do some technical analysis on the S&P 500. We are gonna look at a couple different time frames today. We're gonna look at the daily, the four hour, the one hour, and then the 30 minute, just a recap of what we talked about yesterday. Then we're gonna just quickly recap what took place at the Federal Reserve Open Market Committee today on their projections for the economic outlook. I find it to be important and I find it to be quite comical. And I'll get into that here shortly. Let's get into it. All right, so we are here looking at the Federal Reserve fund rate projections, and then I'm going to go into just GDP um, really quickly. It's 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 interesting to see, and I just want to show you a very quick comparison to the 2019 release before all this stock market crash took place, before the pandemic took place. You know when everything was at its all time high, basically. So first I wanna just call out here, the federal funds rate is going to remain zero to 0.25. Basically they're projecting is all the way through 2022. So we're gonna have cheap money, which technically really means blown up asset prices. When, when interest rates go low, typically you see other bubbles blow up or continue to get bigger and bigger. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a continuation of the expansion of the monetary supply, which is, you know, money printing, which they already came out and they said, you know, we have all the tools in the toolkit necessary. They're going to continue with the repos. They're going to continue with the um, changes here to the small business loans. You know, they reduce it from 500,000 down to 250,000 and making it more accessible to the economy. I also find it very interesting that the Federal Reserve doesn't create money, they they lend money. So they don't spend it, they lend it is what they say. But if you look at this chart here with the small businesses, most small businesses that employ tens of millions of people, they don't even have reserves for months on hand. You can see a large percentage here doesn't have the reserves necessary to cover expenses that might come up from a day to day, let alone if a pandemic hits. So the fact that they're making these loans more accessible and easier to use I personally just don't see how that's going to work out for them to pay those loans back, especially that they're extending the length of the loans as far as principal and interest repayments go. So uh, it's it's like they're fighting debt with more debt. It just, there is no end in sight. And if you think of it from a terms of your own personal life, if you have a credit card that is, you know, overflowing and you're like feeling overwhelmed to pay it, and then all of a sudden you get, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna open up another credit card or do that and I'm gonna make the payments over here with that, which people do, right? It's just debt consolidation. You're taking a lower interest rate or you refi the house, but you're fighting debt with debt when it doesn't really in turn lower the overall principle and then for it just keeps on continuing to basically expand if you keep that process up. So it's just a trap. Now, when they say that they're gonna just bring up in the longer rate to 2.5%, how? How are they gonna do that? How are they gonna be able to pay these loans back or all this new creation of debt back at a higher interest rate later into the future? I, I don't know, but um, we'll save that for another video. Okay, the next thing that I just really want to point out is the GDP. So in 2020, the median projection here is at negative 6%. Okay, understandable with a, a range all the way going down to minus 10. I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's never going to be accurate and there will always be um, some sort of revision. And I think it's going to be at the lower end of this, probably between 8 and 10 as far as the GDP goes. And then here is where it gets kind of funny. Not funny, but interesting. In 2021, they are projecting the medium GDP is going to be between four and six. Let's call it 5%, okay? They're projecting that's gonna be 5%. This here, I want I want to wrap your head around this, okay? I want you to wrap your head around this. They're projecting it to be 5% in 2021, and this is their June release, okay? In June, they projected this. In 2019, let's go ahead and look at what they projected for 2021 previously to the pandemic and the stock market crash. So this is back when everything was going so good and we had the strongest economy in the world, right? Okay, let's go see where they project it in 2021. All right, as you can see here, December 11th, 2019, we're looking at the GDP. Look at this, 2021, 2%. So in, when the economy was at booming, when it was at its greatest point, their projections were 2% in 2021. We had an economic collapse. We have now entered into a recession. We have had more money printing, um, more expansion of the money supply created more than ever, right? So we have all these bad things working against us, uh, including the coronavirus pandemic. And yet we are projecting a GDP of darn near 5%. 
Now, maybe they're projecting this because they see an overshot because we had such an undershot and maybe sometimes it reverts past the mean and it overshoots it and then heads back. Maybe that is it, but I don't know. It just doesn't make much sense to me that they would project so over. So I don't believe that that is gonna be an accurate number. And it's gonna be interesting to see what other real economists say about this and see if they even notice or even bring this back up. And then as you can see, 2022 is at 2% and then basically the longer run is 2% too as well. Remind, re remember the longer run 2%, okay? Just remember that. Okay, so we are here back at the two, June 10th, 2020 projections. That, look at, so 2022, the projections for GDP, it's uh, you know two and a half, three percent, or three and a half percent right up in here. That's where the medium range is of the projection. That is higher than what they projected in the previous uh, 2019 projections. And as you can see, it's going down. You know the the projections are going down, whereas that one was flat at two percent. And in the longer run, two percent. This is what's interesting to me. They think they're all projecting yes, basically a very tight range at two percent. The longer run, GDP is going to be back at two percent. How is it possible that we can go through such a horrific experience in the economy and just all of a sudden just have the same exact estimate in the longer run? Like it's just going to disappear. Like none of that's going to matter. We're going to have the same GDP. Don't worry about it. Um, to me, all of this seems like a bunch of malarkey, and I just wanted to point it out there. The unemployment rate, um, these numbers are inaccurate, and the Federal Reserve actually came out on their talk today and talked about how it was actually more north towards 16%. So they think that it's going to end up the medium range about 10% by the end of the year. Well, I mean, May had somewhat of a good job report. They might get it down towards this range. I think it's going to be double digits. And he did mention that there's going to be millions of people still unemployed or have to go into other sectors of the economy for new jobs. And then they see a steady decline all the way through the longer term. 220, on 2022, they're pro projecting um, about a 5% unemployment rate, which is darn near the best unemployment rate right ever. Like the lowest we've been is right around the four. And some people think that it's going to actually be 4%. This is just, I just, God, like, I just don't understand where these projections are really coming from. No way, no way in heck that these can actually be accurate in the long term. Like, I just don't see it. And, you know, remember, remind myself, or remember that I'm saying this now and you can come back and be like, ah, oh, you were wrong or you were right, whatever the case is. But just take into consideration what actually is going on in the economy and how many businesses are actually failing and big businesses at that or big businesses having to be, be bailed out or you, you, stimulated in some form or fashion to basically, you know, pay their employees. You got to understand this PPP program. The only reason why these businesses are taking it is because it's a forgivable loan. But what happens if they just hold these employees back until the length of time where their loan is forgiven and then they realize that they didn't need those employees and they push them off. So you got to keep all these things into consideration. But now I'm just going on and on. I just wanted to point out the difference there, how they projected lower in 2019. They projected these years as lower and now they're saying that it's going to be better into the future. I don't, I don't know. Crazy to me. Let's go ahead and hop into the charts. Okay, so we are here at the daily time frame. We're gonna then hop into the four hour and the one hour. I'm gonna quickly go through these and then I'm gonna close out on the 30 minute um, because it's a good recap as to where we might see this market heading. The market is not, oh, the market just closed. Okay, it's one o'clock now, the market has closed. This is what I'm seeing as of right now. It's been kind of tight in this little tiny range here for the past couple of days. Um, really just kind of waiting to see what the Federal Reserve have had to come out and say. Gold actually, when it came out, when they came out, spiked from like being basically flat for the day, about a zero bucks, all the way up to about 28 handle that I saw it. Um, I don't know where it is now, but that's besides the point. Um, really, what this looks like it wants to do is, you know, come come downwards and potentially test these two levels. Now, this green zone right here is the bulls camp. This was red, and we called it the bears camp. Okay, but the bulls just came through it and sliced through it like butter. So I think that the price is going to come down and test that. 3130 level, maybe just a tad lower, right? And then, or, you know, it's going to pull back to this range. And both those would be potentially good long opportunities for good risk versus rewards trades, right? They're keeping rates low. That's good for Wall Street, but this market is definitely due for some sort of a pullback and the volatility is increasing. So just keep that in mind. Have tight stop losses if you're going to be trading this kind of price action. And then we have the overhead resistance still remaining in the same exact areas. I, I still feel like the market wants to pull back a little bit here, but then I don't see why it wouldn't want to test the highs. Like it, it's, it's headed that direction. They made this gigantic move. 
Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this all kind of plays out. Or potentially this is this is that market top, and we're going to start seeing a move more downwards. But um, definitely not going to see a straight move down without seeing some sort of bounces from these one of these areas here, because that there's a lot of support and it's in really bullish context. Okay, so here is the four hour time frame. Now the reason why I'm bringing up the four hour time frame is actually somebody in the comments. Um, came out and said, hey, check out the MACD on the four hour time frame. it's curling over. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I should probably look at that. And as you can see, this last four hour candle, that is not the greatest looking candle to be quite honest. It looks like it you know, came up pretty bullish and then pushed itself all the way down. That, keep in mind the context though, it's not at the top here, it's, it's, it's at the bottom. So it does look like there's pressure moving to the downside. But what I wanted to just point out was the MACD does look like it wants to start crossing over. Now it is above zero, so you don't want to hold all too much weight. But if it does cross below on the four hour time frame, that is where we can see that potentially pop through this support line right around, uh, right about here. And you might see that easy push, you know, boom, boom, right to there. And, and or if it breaks through that and closes below, we'd see the breakdown to the lower part of that support. All right, so here is the hourly time frame. As you can see, the last couple of hours um, within the market were quite volatile. I would say the last three, and I want you to pay close attention to these last three because this is basically when the Federal Reserve came out and started talking. As you can see, we saw this level acting as a support. And what's funny about this level is, we'll go ahead and point that back out on the 30 minute time frame. We discussed this on yesterday's video. But it acted as support. The price action opened up here came all the way down a big red candle and then bumped itself all the way up. And then in the final hour of trading, just one solid bear moving candle. Then I just wanna point out the MACD. The MACD does look like it's moving lower and lower. It is bearish. Now things can change or it can pick up volume. It's not a below zero right now. So just note that, but it is, it is, you know, has a nice spread and is moving downward. So this does look like the S&P 500, the SPX, right, the SPY, it looks like some pressure is being applied to the downside, meaning it could be getting a little top heavy where we do see that pullback start taking place that we've been kind of talking about. Let's go ahead and hop into the 30 minute time frame here to just kind of recap what we talked about yesterday and see how the price action worked with between our support and resistances. All right, so here is a 30 minute time frame. This is why I love technical analysis. And people always say, you know, I hear people all the time, hey, technical analysis doesn't count at times like these because of these economic conditions. No, that's never the case. Technical analysis is really all that we have because it's a visual representation of what's taking place in the market live. So yes, of course it matters. Okay, back to my... Back to my story, these two areas were the resistance and the support that we drew out the other day. Now, here's something to note, the price action basically is sideways in this channel, but then look at the MACD. The MACD has been heading lower. It's basic, it's, it's sitting right at about zero right now, the MACD is, so that could be <laughs> even more confirmation that we might be getting that pullback taking place. Now, like I said, news could come out tomorrow, like Donald Trump could be like, oh, heck no, this ain't taking place. And he's going to get some news on Moderna or Gilead or Remdesivir, post it, and then all of a sudden people are going to forget about everything else, right? So keep an eye on this. But here we go. This was our resistance. This was our support. That's what we drew out yesterday. The day today is June 10th. This blue line, that's the vertical line. That's where the day started. Okay, so it acted as resistance up here in the close of the 30 minutes yesterday, downwards. And we're kind of deciding, hey, where's the price going to go? Is it going to gap above this? range or is it going to gap below it? Well, it actually happened to just stay within the range, which makes sense because the Federal Reserve was still coming out to talk. And then it came down, down, down. And then look what it acted as support right in this little zone that we drew out because we actually drew the zone, right? Remember, if you watch this video, we drew a zone pretty much in that range or maybe a little bit lower than that all the way down a little bit to this. Um, but it stayed within that zone. It acted up. And then in these last very volatile time uh, slots here, this two hours, right, of trading, the price went all the way up, touched the top, opened a new candle, came all the way down, touched the bottom of the range, came back all the way up, right? Crazy, crazy how it acted like this. No, it actually opened up here, then came all the way down, retested again, all the way up, and then boom, it opened up there, and then all the way back down to the bottom of this range. So to me, this price looks like it's gonna be heading lower into tomorrow if everything goes accurate. This, the technicals are telling me this is going lower.
Okay, the technicals say that. Because of this big bearish candle, because it's sitting right there at support, like literally just spot onto it, and the MACD is in this kind of steady decline, that looks like the market will get pushed lower. However, it's very possible that it trades within this channel, it depends on how the market wants to react to this news, or if it all of a sudden overnight thinks that the news is good and projects up. But typically what I think, you gotta overall look at the context of the chart. The context of the chart is bullish, right? So if we do have the bearish pop down to the downside, the first level would be, oh, why did I draw that red line? Ignore that red line. The first level would be to that gap close right here, 31.29 down to about 31.12. Let's call it just 3100. Basically this range right there, right? And if it wants to push itself lower, that'd be some significant force in one day. But the next level would be 3000 because a lot of eyes were on that as a resistant level. And now it's going to look like a very strong level as far as support goes. That's all I have for you today on the S&P 500 technical analysis update. Thank you for everybody that does watch my videos and comments and likes and thumbs up and does all that stuff. I really do appreciate it. I will see you here on the next S&P 500 technical analysis update. See you later.